This video was made in partnership with Nubi, who are just as obsessed with movies as we are. The Jumanji franchise has been entertaining audiences and defining childhoods for more than four decades now. But what if The Jungle really was just a roll of the dice away, though? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be breaking down what would happen if Jumanji were real. In real life, you probably want to hit that. If you grew up in the 80s, you might have read Chris Van Allsburg's picture book Jumanji. And if you grew up in the 90s, you definitely saw the hit film adaptation starring the late Robin Williams and maybe even watched the animated series. Not the king! In 2017, Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle revived the franchise, and was followed up by the next level. While Welcome to the Jungle put a new spin on things for the digital age, each incarnation essentially follows the same formula. Our heroes stumble across Jumanji, a mystical jungle-themed game. Oh my god! Get over I am totally suing you! What's wrong with my voice? Get off of me! Where am I? In its classic form as a board game, Jumanji brings the jungle to our world. When it manifests as a video game, Jumanji transports players to a virtual jungle, giving each of them avatars. Either way, the players must complete the game in order to return everything to normal. Like it or not, we have to do this together. The movies traditionally end with our main characters winning and disposing of Jumanji. One way or another, however, Jumanji always finds someone new to play with. While little is known about the game's origins, according to the first movie, it's been around since at least 1869. As far as we know, every person who's played Jumanji has kept its existence a secret. But in an era where everyone shares everything on social media, could Jumanji stay under wraps forever? Chances are someone who played Jumanji would share their experiences online. Oh really? You don't think this would be a good moment to make a phone call or text somebody or change your status to stuck in a freaking video game? We could totally see Jumanji becoming the next Polybius, a mysterious arcade game that supposedly surfaced in 1981 and was said to be a government-run psychology experiment. Coincidentally, that's the same year Jumanji was published. Just as Polybius remains an urban legend, it might be hard to prove that Jumanji actually exists. But you wouldn't believe me even if I told you, Carl. Sure, it'd be hard for people to miss rhinos stampeding through houses, monkeys carjacking police vehicles, and a trigger-happy hunter walking around with an unlicensed firearm. As long as the players complete the game and survive, though, everything reverts back to normal with no evidence. No one would remember what happened unless they were among the original players. It wouldn't be much easier to prove that Jumanji exists in its video game form either. It's not like you can record gameplay and upload it to YouTube. Jumanji also apparently can't be duplicated, making it one of a kind. The only way to prove the game's existence is by playing it with somebody. Call out its name, everyone! Jumanji! 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 Still, rumors would no doubt fly, and once word spread about a game that brought the jungle to life, we're sure that some people would seek it out. Whether you're a thrill-seeking explorer or a fan of role-playing games, Jumanji provides the ultimate adventure. Considering how much some people pay for an actual African safari, we imagine they'd cough up even bigger bucks for a trip to Jumanji. So whoever finally tracked it down could make a fortune. While they were at it, they could expand their business by finding Zathura, the space-themed board game set in the same universe. Alas, renting out Jumanji wouldn't be without trials. The video game version seems much easier to manage than the board game version, as it transports players into Jumanji rather than unleashing the dangers of the jungle into our world. Then again, the board game can also trap players inside. Although Jumanji resets if the game is completed, there'd be no guarantee that every player would make it out in one piece. As such, count on insurance being a nightmare. Players would have to sign their lives away, agreeing not to sue if they're turned into a monkey, blown up by cake, or lost in the jungle for 26 years. Hey, it's all good. Even if people knew the risks and were still willing to pay to play, Jumanji is perhaps too powerful and unpredictable for one person to be responsible for. So it might be a better idea to sell Jumanji to a billion dollar corporation with a crack team of lawyers, the resources to keep the game under control and cash to burn? We need to oh, Stop doing that. Disney already has the Jungle Cruise and The Rock in their corner, so we're sure they'd love to bring a Jumanji attraction to Adventureland. Jumanji would also fit in well with Universal's Islands of Adventure. Whoever the highest bidder is, we expect people would line up to play a game that turns them into a smoldering archaeologist or a dance-fighting commando. She's kicking their ass. That's our girl. With a company like Disney or Universal running the show, Jumanji would go from an urban legend to a mainstream phenomenon like Jurassic World. If the Jurassic movies have taught us anything, however, it's that something is always bound to go wrong. While Jumanji will undo any damage once beaten, players have gotten stuck in the game, causing it to last for decades. By stalling the game this way, you could potentially erase years from existence. Holy smokes, Judy and Peter! 
Alan! They're not there. It's 1969. They don't even exist yet. This can ultimately work to the advantage of some people, such as Peter and Judy, who got their parents back after Alan was rescued, returned to 1969, and changed history. But what about the countless other people who could be affected? Saving a lost player's life could cause a far-reaching chain reaction, and it might not be for the best in the long run. Anyone who plays Jumanji can't afford to be in there for an extended period of time. There's also the psychological turmoil that may come with playing the game. I think I need to have my dosage checked. That event we've been discussing for a long time now, the one that didn't really happen. Oh boy, I'm having an episode here today with a little boy that didn't really disappear. While the movies kind of touch upon this, Alan Parrish still feels pretty well-rounded for a guy who's been stuck in Jumanji for most of his life, and it doesn't take long for Sarah to get over her years of trauma. Alan and Sarah get second shots at childhood in the end, but we think that anyone who's been through such an ordeal would be living with PTSD. Heck, nearly getting eaten by crocodiles would be enough to scar most of us for life. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. In order to make sure nobody gets lost, emotionally tormented, or trampled over, it'd probably be smart to send an experienced travel guide with every group. Max against the wall! Oh my goodness! Let's keep moving. If the travel guide beats Jumanji enough times, they'd be able to crack every secret and memorize every obstacle, guaranteeing everybody gets out alive. Since Jumanji works in mysterious ways, though, it may try upping the difficulty or presenting a new challenge if one player becomes too familiar with its tricks. Something's about to happen. I hate those drums. After all, this could be seen as a form of cheating. Jumanji seems less like a game and more like a wild animal that can adapt to its environment. With so many uncertain factors, disposing of Jumanji would likely be the smartest move if it were real. Even if you threw the game into an incinerator, however, we're not entirely convinced that Jumanji could ever be stopped for good. However you got rid of the game, we'd suggest attaching a note for anyone who might find it in the future. The description provided on the game is fairly vague, and people might want to know what's really in store for them if they dare to play. You roll the dice to move your token, doubles gets another turn, and the first player to reach the end wins. So I know it'd be really cool if Jumanji were real, but just imagine if Zathura were real. Okay, like Jumanji in space, does it get better than that? I don't think so. Anyways, what do you guys think? Would you find it cool if Jumanji were actually real? Let us know in the comments, be sure to like and subscribe to Watch Mojo, and click here for more great content. This video was made in partnership with Newbie, who are just as obsessed with movies as we are.